Hi kids! Okay, so last video was The Shining, released in May of 1980. I've gone back in time a little bit because I realized I missed Alien, and I think it's important. So this is Alien, released May 1979. So going back a year. Uh, Alien was the brainchild of Dan O'Banion. Um, Dan O'Banion had made a student film in 1970. Four, uh, called Dark Star. That is a film that he co-wrote with John Carpenter. Uh, John Carpenter directed it. Uh, Dan O'Banion as well as uh, writing it was the editor and the production designer on that. Uh, it was a student film though. Budget was only $60,000. It is about a alien on a spaceship. Uh, O'Banion wasn't happy with the quality of Dark Star and felt like they could do much better with a better budget. So he wrote the script for Alien. Uh, took it around, trying to find somebody to finance it. Uh, brought it to a new production company called Brandywine Productions uh, that consisted of uh, three men. One of them is Gordon Carroll, who was a film producer. The other was uh, David Geiler. Uh, his father was a writer, and when he came of age, he joined his father, wrote with him. His father passed away. He decided to become a producer. And the third was Walter Hill. Walter Hill was a film director, uh, directed genre films, uh, 48 Hours, uh, Red Heat, Warriors. Um, so he joined them. That is the production company. They liked Alien. Um, the three of them, though, uh, had a crack at rewriting the screenplay, which O'Banion wasn't too happy with. Uh, they added subplots that he wasn't happy with. Uh, they added the character Ash, so that's one thing that they added that made it to the final product. Um, so then they're pitching it to studios, and they pitch it as uh, Jaws in space, because... What's the most popular things in the 70s? Jaws and Star Wars. And they tell studios, this is both of those things. 20th Century Fox Bites. Um, they'll make it. Now they just need a director. So um, O'Banion had wanted to direct it, but he wasn't confident in himself directing some of the special effects that were required. Um, Walter Hill would have directed it because he's a director, but he had prior uh, commitments, scheduling conflicts, so he wasn't going to be able to direct it. So they found Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott had just directed his first feature-length film, The Shootist. Uh, they seen that. They liked it. Prior to The Shootist, Ridley Scott was a... he directed commercials, um, like George A. Romero. So they approach Ridley. Ridley, of course, says yes. Um, and they start pre-production. They're waiting for the studio to give them the budget before they start spending the money. Um, while they're waiting, Ridley Scott does storyboards for the entire script. Uh, the studio sees the storyboards and decides to double what they were originally going to give for the budget. So the budget ends up being $11 million. Um, for the look of the alien and all of the technology associated with the alien, uh, Banyan had uh, been attached to a movie that didn't get made, 2000's Dune. There's a documentary called that. Want to learn more about that. Uh, but basically, it was an adaptation of Dune. Um, one of the other people attached to that was a uh, Swiss artist, H.R. Geiger. Geiger is known for his uh, biomechanical art. So uh, Banyan liked the look of that, thought it would fit his alien, so he brought him in to do that. Um, as for playing the alien, I'm going to probably butcher the name, but here it is. So it's, uh, they found uh, Balaji Badejo. Um, he was a Nigerian immigrant uh, to the UK. Uh, he was a visual artist student, and uh, someone from the production saw him at a bar. He was six foot ten, and they approached him about playing the alien. He agreed. Um, 
to get the feel that they wanted for the alien, he took Tai Chi and uh, mime classes to kind of slow down his movements and make it seem more alien. Uh, and then they would get casting uh, in the script for the film. Uh, none of the roles were gender specified. So they could either any part could be played by a man or a woman. Uh, so that's how you get characters like Ripley, the way that Ripley is written. It wasn't uh, written for women. Uh, and Sigourney Weaver, I think, was the biggest unknown, maybe one of the youngest in the cast. They went for more of an experienced um, cast or older cast, right, to portray a more experienced crew on the ship. Um, yeah, so the film gets made. Um, gets released. It opens in 90 theaters, so that's uh, not quite the number that Jaws was released in, but more than the 10 screens that uh, The Shining was released in. Uh, it's the big hit for Memorial Day weekend. It's breaking a bunch of house records in theaters, so that just means that uh, it's selling the most tickets for any one film that they had up to that point um, ends up grossing $184.7 million. Not too bad out of an $11 million budget. Gets nominated for two Academy Awards. Um, wins for Best Visual Effects. And then the other nomination was for Art Direction. Um, and that is Alien. I wanted to bring it up. Because some people might say it's sci-fi, some might say it's horror, think it's a little of both. Um, when Ridley Scott came on, right, it was pitched as uh, Jaws in space, he had just seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So his approach was, what if it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in space? And he filmed it. Uh, it's The pacing is slow to start, right? And it slowly builds. Uh, a lot of shadows, you don't see the alien a lot, so kind of like Jaws. Um, and he filmed it all from the side to make it look alien. Um, yes, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of slasher. You got the final girl there, right? Ripley. It's a different take on the final girl because it wasn't written for a girl. Uh, there's some body horror, there's gore. A little bit of everything for your horror fans, right? Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention that I didn't mention in a previous video was the Benchdale test. So the Benchdale test is a, basically a really low bar for rep representation of women in film. And there are basically just two guidelines for the Benchdale test. One is, uh, to pass it anyways, the film has to have at least two named female characters. Okay, not too bad. You should be able to have that in a movie. Uh, if there's at least two of them, the two of them have to have a conversation together. Again, not too bad. And the conversation can't be about a man. It has to be about anything else but a man. So that's the Benchdale test. Alien is one of a handful of horror films that pass the test. There's probably 45 in all of horror. Um, one of the ones that we've covered that previous that passed the test is obviously Carrie, because there's pretty much all women and no men in that movie, right? Okay, so that's Alien. That's the Benchdale test. You're welcome. Uh, next up, um, we're going to... Uh, go to Camp Crystal Lake. All right. So I like, subscribe. See you later, campers.